Hey everybody, Ryan F. MTG here, and today we are starting the set review for the new Tuppen set, Ace vs. the People, or AVP, not Alien vs. Predator, Ace vs. the People. And just a couple reminders of what my set reviews are. These are my initial thoughts. I've read most of these cards, not all of them, so these are my initial thoughts, and I'm very okay being right or wrong, you know, come a couple days or come a couple weeks from now, because I just like doing this to get the brain flowing of what I kind of want to start brewing around with, what I think will be good and bad also two more things of note there is a set rotation so three of the old sets day of nightmares the devil's awaken and the four seekers got rotated out of standard and now they're just in unlimited and we kind of have to wait and see to see what unlimited is because right now it's more like tap being like oh we'll announce more later so hopefully unlimited becomes a cool format but for now we are just looking at standard so i might be like oh this isn't as good as golden orb so just play golden orb but i I believe golden orb just rotated out so i might make some mistakes because sometimes rotation is hard to keep in mind what all cards rotate out especially when there are three sets filled with them and the last one is there's no new hero so when we look at each color, we already know the heroes and the hero arts and stuff like that. So it's not like, oh, maybe this is a brew around with Ace or Phoenix Wright or whatever. But, you know, that is what it is. Kind of stinks. I'm still kind of salty about that. But I'm excited for new cards. Let's start looking at all the red cards. First up, we have the red legendary. That's Miles Edgeworth, 5 MP for 2-7 when placed on the field, deal damage to one random enemy unit equal to the amount of open board slots times two so right there it's open board slot times two so miles will take a board slot and your opponent's unit that you want to destroy or hopefully destroy will take up a board slot and there's six board slots overall in teppin so that minus two that'd be four so at most this is doing eight damage well okay that's great that's great but if miles is the six board uh unit on the board then it's not doing any damage but you know you can definitely play around with miles and make this be doing a lot of damage and i like that because for 5 mp times two is really really good if you're getting that eight damage even if you're getting like four damage right like your your opponent has three units on board you only have miles well that's going to do four damage because there's two open board slots so overall i like that two seven is a pretty good body for five it's nothing ridiculous but that means it'll attack and it has some good hp but there's more Destroyed by damage effects, collect one piece of evidence. Evidence is the new mechanic, and things give you evidence, and then a lot of times you have to spend evidence, and I believe that's called present, not present, present. I might call it present, just, just a warning. Um, and you kind of consume that, right? So it's a resource that you consume. So you need to collect it, you consume it. So it's not like memory or something like that, where like memory seven, you play a card with memory seven. Well, you still have memory seven for the rest of the game. So of note, we really have to look at how many good ways there are to collect evidence and then how many good ways it's useful to spend that evidence or present that evidence. So Miles is kind of nice, right? If you destroy something with damage dealing effects, you collect one piece of evidence. Okay, that's cool. That That's gravy on top of the cake that I'm already enjoying. Then death, it's consume three pieces of evidence. Okay, right there, consume three pieces of evidence. Then return this unit to the EX pocket. I like that. Miles is good, and you can keep on returning Miles as long as you have three pieces of evidence. And he does kind of give you some evidence, right? Because if you do kill something with damage dealing effects, you collect one. You would need to do that three other times. So I don't think it's completely realistic just to be like, hey, Miles will always collect three pieces of evidence before he dies so he can just be an evidence machine. I think you want to be playing some other evidence cards with him, but maybe not because just raw power level stats i'm pretty high on miles next up is witness dan dan is in street fighter 5 now he's in teppin a lot more this set has a lot of dan so therefore a lot of gimmicks a lot of just what dan does anyways he's a legendary is dan never a legendary i guess 3 mp for a 1 7 legendary it has agility attacking deal one damage to the unit in front okay cool when an enemy unit is placed on the field, move this unit to the front of the enemy unit. 
it's kind of cool. I feel like this is flavorful of Dan just kind of running around, kind of nonsense, kind of getting beaten up. And that's what he usually does. He kind of gets beaten up, but then he does some damage. Overall, I don't think I really like Dan. 3 MP for 1-7, that's very little attack, but quite a lot of HP for 3 MP for sure. I like agility, however, you only have one attack, but that means it will trigger the attacking dealing one damage to the unit in front. Dealing one damage to the unit in front is nice, but one damage is not tons. And then basically your opponent, Dan is up to your opponent to kill more or less, and it's kind of easy for your opponent to kill because if it's a green deck, they could just play a big beast and just eat Dan because Dan runs in front of it and just like runs out in the street and gets hit by a car. So I don't know, maybe if you're playing pump spells or ways to protect Dan, Dan could be very annoying for your opponent, but I'm not seeing the raw power level for Dan. Steel Samurai is 7 MP for 210. 7 MP is kind of high, 2 attack is very low, 10 HP is very good. It has crush, which I really like crush keyword. Attacking move to a random empty board slot and art charge 1. So this guy just runs around, which can be good or bad depending. And our charge one is nice because yes, it's not a ton, but this is every single time he attacks. So you throw agility on this dude and that's going to be great. Death, it's place will powers in the same board slot. Will powers is a one MP card, but you're not really playing it, right? You just get it for free. It's a two four and it has slow. That's not impressive. However, that's just kind of gravy on Steel Samurai, right? It's just a death effect. Like, would you play a two four for with slow? No, well actually, a 1 MP for a 2-4 with slow, you might actually play because 1 MP is very cheap for a unit. We don't ever see anything less than 3 MP. But anyways, you're not playing this card. You're just getting it for free. Overall, I think that Steel Samurai, you could build around kind of with like pump spells, right? I'm looking at pump spells because pump spells are great with crush. And then you just kind of let Steel Samurai go. But just 7 MP seems kind of a lot to me. So overall, I'm probably passing on Steel Samurai besides if it's a build around card. Lucia, 6 MP for a 3-8 with Rush, destroy by damage effect, consume one piece of evidence, then deal two damage to the enemy hero. I got really excited because I thought it said an enemy unit because that's usually much more beneficial, but it is the enemy hero, which is good. So it's burned to the face, which maybe some like Dendron Rinky burn decks want. Well, you know me, I like trying out some burn decks. It also has ascend, deal five damage split among enemy units, then collect three pieces of evidence. Overall, Lucia does a lot of things. Base level, six MP, kind of on the higher end, but not that high, you know, less than Steel Samurai. A three eight body, I like a three eight body. Three attack is nice, eight HP is a lot. Rush is great because it just she punches in right away, which is kind of flavorful. I feel like she's usually moving pretty fast in Street Fighter V. Destroyed by damage effects, you consume one piece of evidence, then deal two damage to the enemy hero. That's kind of extra gravy, right? I, I like that. That gives her some reach, especially in an aggressive deck or if you can throw burn along with Lucia. The Ascend is where I want to be playing her. I really want to get the Ascend trigger because the Ascend of dealing five damage split on enemy units and then you collect three damage, which then you can consume later. That is very good. I like these cards that give you some um, evidence and then a way to spend that evidence right in all one package. So overall, I like Lucia. Andrew's looking very studious. 4 MP for a 2-5. When a friendly human unit is placed on the field, give all other friendly red units plus one attack. I don't really like this card that much. Like 4 MP for a 2-5, those stats are fine. She does nothing when you play her or when she enters the battlefield. And so then you have to play other units. And yes, plus one attack is nice, but there's a lot of red cards that just deal damage, right? Like... There's so many red cards uh, like Lady and stuff like that, that like, oh, when a human enters the battlefield it deals damage. And overall, usually in red decks, I would rather be playing that. Besides maybe for like some Amaterasu Miracles list that you really care about the attack. So like pairing her up with Amaterasu Miracles and like Rathalos and stuff like that, that could actually go. However, I just got sad because Rathalos is not a human. So that makes her more narrow. And the more I think about this, the more off I am on Andrews. Up next, we have the best dog just chowing down on some sausage or hamburgers. 3 MP for a 2-5. When played, collect one piece of evidence. Attacking, collect one piece of evidence. 
nothing presenting. So it's just 3 MP for a 2-5, which that body is fine for 3 MP. It's actually pretty good, but it's not dealing any damage. It's just collecting evidence, right? You, you're probably more or less guaranteed two pieces of evidence besides if they kill it before it attacks once. If you are all in evidence dot deck and you really, really want a way to collect more, I think you'll play the good boy. If you're not, this is not fitting in any other red deck. So we'll kind of have to wait and see. Cody looking very dapper with his tie and everything. 5 MP for a 2-8. When a friendly unit is placed on the field, collect two pieces of evidence, then deal two damage to one random enemy unit. The, this is kind of what I want more. We're 5 MP for a 2-8. I like those stats. Then, especially the 8 HP, that's just a lot, which you want Cody to stay around because he wants to see his friends come. And his friends can be anything, right? It can be a monster, it can be Rathalos, it can be a human. Cody doesn't care, everyone's welcomed in his city. He's the mayor, everyone's welcome. And collecting two pieces of evidence is nice, and then deal two damage is great. You don't have to consume evidence or anything. So overall, I like Cody quite a bit. Then we have Wendy Oldbag, and I don't, it just seems such like a discriminatory last name, or is that a nickname? Which then if it's a nickname, that seems very mean. But anyways, I kind of feel bad for Wendy with that name, regardless of how she got it. It's 4 MP for a 2-5. When played, deal 2 damage split among all enemy units. While on the field, collect 1 piece of evidence every 5 seconds. So first, 4 MP for a 2-5. That's a little below rate just because we kind of see sometimes that stats on 3 MP, but nothing too, too terrible, but nothing to write home about. I like that when you play it, you deal two damage split among all enemy units. However, for 4 MP, we usually see more than two damage, but two damage is still two damage. You'll take it. Collecting evidence every five seconds is nice. That means every attack cycle, she collects you two pieces of evidence. That is really good. If you want evidence, you will play Wendy. If you don't care about evidence, you're not playing Wendy. The blue badger, 3 MP for a 110. Okay, one attack. We kind of seen these stats before in red for a 3 MP play. What does he do though? This unit can't attack. So he just stands there waving at you or waving his flag, whatever he's doing. When played, you collect four pieces of evidence. So you want evidence really, really, really bad you'll play this. But right now, I would rather play the good boy and I would rather play Wendy and just a lot of other cards because overall, like this not attacking, I don't know, that's not what Red wants to do. Red wants to attack and deal damage and now maybe collect some evidence and spend some evidence. So overall, the blue badger, I'm, I'm off of it. Besides, if you're really, really desperate and maybe we will see good payoffs. Catherine holding this pig. For some reason, I don't really know who she is and what that pig is, but kind of adorable, I guess. I don't know. 4 MP for a 2 7. Better stats. Destroyed by damage effects, give one random unit in your hand or EX pocket plus two attack. Plus two attack is a lot, especially that's hand or EX pocket, so you're probably always proccing this. However, it's destroyed by damage dealing effects, and I probably would rather play cards that destroy by damage dealing effects. You get, you know, more damage or. You know, you get to explore or something like that or collect evidence, I guess I should say, because that's the theme of this set. However, I'm looking at maybe a miracle, Amaterasu miracle list or like Rathlos, right? Or Rashid, something that you really want their attack to get buffed because then they deal more damage. Well, one, when they hit the enemy hero or two, just, you know, throwing damage around willy nilly. So I think this is a build around card. I'm hesitant to where she finds a home, but I kind of want to play around with her. The last unit is none other than a monster. 3 MP for a 2-4. After taking damage and surviving, deal one damage to one random enemy unit and the enemy hero. I'm kind of off this. Taking damage and surviving when you're just a 2-4 body, I don't think that's proccing that much. And if it does, it's just one damage to a unit, one damage to the hero, which is nice, but it's not that great. So overall, off this card, and I don't think it will see play. Okay, time to look at the red legendaries, and let's see how many ways we can present our evidence that we collected with the units, because the units overall help us collect more than presenting and consuming, even though there's some ways to consume. We're starting off with the legendary and just Dan looking ultra Dan. 
Provocation Legend, which is actually probably a pretty good name for Dan. Saying Legend, I don't know, but he's a legend in his own right. 2 MP, give our charge 10 to your friendly red hero. Of note, friendly red hero. So this cannot be with a feline or multicolor deck. However, you give our charge 5 to the enemy hero. I, <laughs> I don't know, like, these Dan cars are very gimmicky, right? And just very... Hodgepodge, which is very much like Dan. So flavorful, I like it. It's a hit flavor-wise. Our charge 10 is soup. That is tons. Like, if you're playing something that has our charge like 14, you're almost there, right? Like just playing this card, that's 12 our charge because you get two to play this. So like this card in and of itself is 12 our charge for two MP. But you are giving your opponent five. So half of what you're getting. I don't know, that's kind of a risky thing. However, what I'm really, really wanting to play this in is aggressive like Amaterasu's Thunder Edge or something like that where you're kind of all in on pumping. Just think about that. If you like play a unit or like play this, play a unit and quickly use your hero power, that seems really, really good. In grindy like Hadouken decks or something like that, this is still really good because it gets you closer to your Hadouken or your like Great Divine Intervention or something like that, but the games tend to go longer so then your opponent can utilize the Arch Charge of Five a little bit more efficiently. I'm excited to play with this card for sure. Unveiling Ceremony, 2 MP, and this is kind of the ubiquitous 2 MP burn spell to units that red usually gets with each and every set. Some are very good, some are very bad. Standard now got some rotate out, so maybe we're looking for some new ones. This one says deal two damage to one enemy unit equal to the number of units on board. First, you get to pick. It's not random, so that's great. So equal to the number of units on board. Let's do some math. We are kind of did this with Miles, I believe. There's six board slots. So at most, this can do six. At least, well, your, your you know, deal damage in one enemy unit would do one, right? If you just have one thing. So it's one to six. If this is two MP deal one damage, I'm off this real fast. We have you know, either way better like chain of fists and stuff like that. If this is six MP, that's really good for two MP. So where do I kind of want this? I kind of want this to be four because usually four is kind of that sweet spot. Three is a little bit lacking. If you can usually get this four to six, that is very, very good. What's nice is you can wait and hold this and play your units first have your opponents play units then play this right so maybe you have to play around with this a little bit more than other red burn spells but maybe that's more like rescuer's bullet or something like that i think this card could be really good of note though you have to be playing units i feel like if you are a red deck that's kind of the gimmicky red actions with just a couple legendaries i don't think that the ceremony is going to be good but if you're kind of like a gdi or you know just a more traditional red deck i think this card could see a lot of play Real samurai show three mp switch the attack of one friendly unit and the unit in front very gimmicky three mp is not not tons but more than one or two mp and i love one or two mp actions and those get a really higher rating on average so three mp is not too bad I don't, this is gimmicky. If you're playing a lot of one MP, or sorry, one attack units, maybe like a GDI, and I kind of keep talking about GDI with Steel Tigers, all that stuff, then maybe this could be good. But I don't know. I feel like this is high upside. The upside is very high. The, the low side is very low. Overall, I'm probably pretty low on Samurai Show. I'm probably not going to play it, but maybe I'll see a GDI deck or something and someone will be like, this card's busted and I could see it. You know, switching like, oh, your one attack thing with a Orochi feels fantastic, but it also is the unit in front. So it does have some hoops to play around with. Up next is just as planned, four MP, looking ultra smug, deal two damage to all enemy units. Present five, deal six pierce damage to all enemy units instead. This card seems very good. Four MP is kind of a lot, not tons, I should say kind of high, but four MP for the deal two damage to all enemy units, I would not want to play that card at all. Is it completely unplayable? No, but are there way better things to be doing? Yes. However, if you are a deck that can get evidence 
to present five and five i feel is like kind of a lot so maybe you're playing all the wendy's the good dogs all those things or the blue whatever that little blue wavy guy is maybe you're playing that to then do just as planned because dealing six pierce damage to all enemy units is a lot six damage to three units is a lot and then pierce damage is fantastic joint investigation two mp deal three damage to one enemy unit okay not terrible but not exciting present three instead deal three damage to that unit okay another really good evidence burn spell eight damage for two mp is fantastic so yet again maybe you are throwing all the dogs and stuff just to get these evidence just to make these burn cells spells shine because two mp to deal eight damage you will be playing that every single day 2 MP for 3 damage, you're not playing, but hey, if that's the worst case scenario, that's actually still pretty okay, right? That's okay. That's not terrible. You're not going to cry yourself to sleep that night if you play this for 2 MP to deal 3, but you will feel ultra powerful if you are getting that 8 damage more times than not. This, this art is just so weird to me. It's a it's a t-shirt. So we're getting an action card that's a t-shirt and like i just feel like this is like some product placement like hey you want to buy this teppan shirt and guess what yeah that's a pretty cool shirt i would buy it you would buy it too don't lie to yourself anyways three mp give plus two attack to one friendly red unit three mp plus two attack i'm off that i don't like that however present three additionally give plus one plus one to all friendly red units so monocolor deck bgdi or something with like rathlos this could actually shine. However, you have to make sure that you present with three because if you don't, there's way better ways to get plus two attack for usually two MP. So this has some high upside. And I guess yet again, the low ceiling is you basically spent one more MP than you usually do to get plus two attack. Lazy Bones, Dan being Dan, I guess. I don't know. 2 MP, give one enemy unit, cannot block. I don't like this card. You're spending 2 MP and an action just to make one enemy unit not be able to block. I I don't know. Like, sure, someone's going to be like, oh, this is a really cool combo with this, this, and this. And yeah, maybe it is. But overall, I don't think that this will find a home in any of my red decks or just, well, any deck in, in my Teppan collection. Desperate Search, 1 MP. Okay, 1 MP cards can be very, very good. Or just trash. Let's find out. Let's find out. 1 MP. Give 1 friendly red unit plus 1 attack. Okay. Of note, it is red, so not multicolor. Present 3. Give that unit additional plus 2 attack. So if you can present 3, that's 1 MP for 3 attack. That is really, really good. So my question is... Is there a extremely aggressive, like maybe Thunder's Edge or Wrath of Woken, you know, that cares about units and then pump actions that can collect three evidence and make this, you know, plus three attack more times than not. And then also maybe just one MP for plus one attack. That's nothing fancy, but yet again, Hey, if that gets the final couple points of damage in or makes your Rathalos hit for a little bit harder, I think you'll play this. I don't know. I could see Search being very, very good because one MP cards can be scary because they can be so broken so fast. Speak about one MP actions. Let's talk about this one. Announcement poster to the Steel Samurai Show. Deal two damage to one random enemy unit. Present two. Additionally, deal two damage to the enemy hero. So... I'm going to say it right here. I don't think, I don't know, maybe like a Dungeon Ranky list or a Burn gimmick list will want to play this because dealing two damage and then two damage to the enemy hero with a Dungeon Ranky trigger, and then it's three damage to three damage, all for one MP is very, very good. However, dealing one damage, actually one MP to deal two damage, I don't know, like, it's not the worst like we have the glove the waving gloves and stuff like that like i don't know this could just be a, a powerhouse in something like dungeon ranky will powers testimony 2 mp move one enemy unit to a random empty board slot present one which is seems very very cheap additionally deal three damage to that unit 
I don't know. So that means you want to be moving your opponent's units and maybe dealing three damage. I'm kind of off this card. Like, yes, I kind of get it that this just plays with the lanes and you can get juked and you feel bad, but this seems a little bit too gimmicky to me. And like, I don't know, I'd rather just play better burn spells for two MP and there's a lot of them. There's a ton of them. Abrupt shift change, three MP, return one friendly red unit to the EX pocket, then place one unit with the MP cost of four or less from your deck into the same board slot. Yet again, I could see stuff that's really cool to do, but overall, I feel like this is playing around and it's just like, I don't know, just play units, burn units, protect your units, and that is probably going to be better than a rough shift change overall. <laughs> this, this, this card is weird to me. Mountains of stuff, and mostly just the flavor. It's like Dan's Locker, and this is an action card? Okay, it's 3 MP, deal damage to one enemy unit equal to the number of cards in your EX pocket times four. So I guess this does play very well with Abrupt Shift Change because if you do Abrupt Shift Change then this is dealing a lot of damage, but yet again, I think there's just way better ways to deal damage. I, I do, and just easier. This is 3 MP, which isn't a ton, but I'm kind of off this card very fast and I don't want to look at Dan's mess anymore. Next up is Chatterbox, 3 MP, deal one damage to one unit three times. That's nice because the first time it procs the shield, then it would actually deal two damage. Present two, additionally deal one damage to that unit three times. So overall, if you present two, right, this would do one damage six times. So six times overall, this could be very, very powerful. However, it's three MP. We already saw another three MP burn card that I'm a little bit higher on. And there's a lot of two MP burn cards. So I think that this could have home but I'm kind of off of it just because it's 3 MP and I think there's other better ways to use your evidence. However, maybe like with shields and shields are really powerful. So maybe if you're just getting hosed by shields all the time, you put this in to be like, LOL, F you, you shield. The last red card that we need to talk about is footprint tracking. I like this card mostly just because of the dog. Look at the dog. He's adorable. He looks confused, or maybe he's like, yo, I know what's going on, human. Anyways, five MP, which is a lot. This has to do a ton of stuff. Deal six damage to one enemy unit. Mm, that's not that good for five MP. Give minus two MP to it, one footprint tracking in your deck, then add it to your EX pocket. So you kind of draw one and you make it cheaper. Okay, let's go through the math. First off, you can only play three cards of this in your deck. Okay. Your first one is 5 MP to deal 6 damage. I don't like that, I hate it. However, you get to draw another one, put it in your deck, and now it's minus two. So the second one is 3 MP to deal 6 damage. Okay, that, that actually seems kind of nice. And you draw a card. Your last one is 1 MP to deal 6 damage. That is very, very good. And all these just kind of can tri tripping, AK just drawing another version of itself seems really, really nice. However, it starts at five. My big grievance with this is if you ever have two in your hand, yes. Wait, oh, wait, wait. Oh, if you have three in your hand, you're never getting the minus two MP, right? If you are unlucky, you have all three in your hand, they all stay at five, right? Because it's give minus two MP to one foot per tracking in your deck. So, or if you have two in your hand, you play one, one's in your EX pocket for three MP, but one is still in your hand for five MP. And Teppan decks are only 30 cards. So if you're playing three of these, you might see two of them before you play it. So I feel like as soon as you have one in your hand, you wanna play it right away to get the ultimate value out of it. So I don't know, flipper tracking, it has you jump through hoops and like, I don't know, I think it, like, I don't know. Red just has way better efficient things to be, to be doing more times than not. So overall, those are all the red cards. Red got some really, really powerful stuff that really, really wants to force you to play with evidence and present, which is cool. My big question is how easy will it be? Because of note, I believe all in red, all the collecting evidence, I believe was just in the units and they had some ways to use the evidence for sure, but usually you use the evidence with your actions. And I don't think that there's any actions that were like, you get four evidence, which would make evidence maybe too broken or a lot easier to use. So overall, there's definitely some things to explore. And of course, where I got some love and with some burn and 
I'm really excited to maybe play with some GDI just because like with Rathos Rashids, it's always good and stuff like that. And it got some like really good attack ups or like Thunder Edge on with Ooh, you know, I love that deck. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Next time we will talk about all the green cards.